October 2nd, 2007. Dear Diary, That's it. I'm tired of working for the man, Diary. I am what you call a free and creative spirit. What do I mean by that? Hell, I don't know. Go ask the dude who I overheard telling someone else that. The fact of the matter is, I can't work for the man anymore. That's why I called in sick today. I needed time to search for a different job. Uh, what's that? What do you mean I'm just going to be working for a different man? Ha! Huh. Shows how much you know. I already work for the man. If I crawl out from under his oppressive thumb and score a new job with a boss who is a different man, then... Let me see. I currently work for the man. Okay, that's right. So if I quit and go work for a different man, then I no longer work for the man. Okay, that checks out. So my new boss would become... Well, I had it all worked out earlier. Don't think I can't see what you're doing, diary. This is logic, right? I told you, man. I never studied logic. None of your mumbo-jumbo is going to work on me. It never does. What was that dog crap you tried selling me? Some dogs are white. All dogs bark. Therefore, all white dogs bark. Do you remember how I poked holes in that theory? Snoopy. Never seen him bark. All white dogs bark, indeed. Now let's get back on track here. Focus, diary. So, I called in sick today. That is, I called and let it ring a millisecond, then hung up. Legally, that counts as calling in sick. If they cannot be bothered to pick up the phone in that one millionth of a second before I hang up, that's on them, not me. I can't be expected to hang around on hold all day, especially when I'm sick. Roy taught me that, along with all the life hacks and life lessons I have ever needed. I can recall he used to get me in a chokehold and make me call him Professor, and for good reason. He has more brains in his head than I have in my little pinky. Well, after calling in sick, I hopped online and looked for work. I know it may have looked like I was just beating off, but that's where you would be wrong. The broads on those barely legal sites, what do you call them, MILFs? They're not even my type. Yeah. The point is, at 19, they are ready to be put out to pasture. I prefer my lady friends to be a little less uh, prepared to spurn my advances. To be a little less road-worn. The reason I was looking for work on these sites is simple. I have decided to dip a toe in the adult film industry. Now I know what you're thinking. I will be up against stiff competition. The hours will be long and hard. But I believe I can pull it off. I believe I could pull it right off. My main trait that is going to open those doors for me is my gnarled, left-leaning Mr. Penis. The way I see it, the world is ready for a leading man with a deformed crank in the adult film industry. I have thought on this at length. Right now there are untold number of scripts out there, good scripts, that have been shelved simply because there hasn't been anyone available who could come at it from the perfect angle. I have even come up with some titles to dazzle them with as I work my magic on the sticky, well-worn casting couch. Tell me what you think of these. It curved from outer space. Left hand Luke. Something twisted this way curves. Wonky Willy and the Chocolate Factory. U turn of the Jedi. Raiders of the Cox Ark. You got curved. Bend it like Armstrong. Broke Dick Mountain. And it goes on like that. As you can see, the real question is, what am I waiting for? Well, today, like always, I was waiting on my precious Kayla Marie. I messaged at 8.30 this morning, then again at 4 o'clock p.m., then 6.15, 7.15, 7.30. It was then that I had had enough. I put a towel under the door, combined all the liquid from the empty beer cans littering the apartment, until I had a good two chugs of flat, skunky swill that was closer to vinegar than beer, I turned the Boston fedora backwards and got down to some serious sleuthing. It is a lesser known fact that my computer prowess extends beyond the graphics realm of realistic roses and 
highly emotive facial expressions I craft with but a keyboard. Truth be told, the focus I put on those abilities, it's all a ruse. What do you mean, ruse? It's pronounced ruse. Oh, you want to bet on it? Oh, you'd loose that bet, believe me. Back to my completely true description of what I did to track down my playfully evasive girlfriend, who had lovingly ignored me all day. It's a game we play. Typically, I message a dozen times during the day. She doesn't respond until I've already blown a gasket, suffered a minor stroke, and am barely able to see through my bloodshot eyes, and my teeth are splintering from the incredible force put on them by my clenching jaw. We have fun. In detective mode, I began putting in codes needed to bypass firewalls. Specifically, my password to access MySpace, for one. I have recently changed it to... Oh shoot, what did I change my password to? Hang on a second. I have it written on a post-it note I stuck on the computer monitor. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay, I got it. It's Key Lime Pie? Key Lime Pie. That doesn't sound right. Oh, it's Kayla Marie. <laughs> I forgot that I had written it in a sort of scrawling code of sorts. You have to protect passwords, diary. Most people do not get the importance of doing so. Let me put this back on the monitor so I don't lose it. Okay, so after hacking into my MySpace account, I uncovered something disturbing. My little KK had logged in and not sent me a friggin' message in the Yahoo chat. She is lucky that I am unable to get to her, the playful minx. I would have lovingly applied pressure on her pencil neck. Let me finish. As I leaned in to give her a kiss is what I was going to say. Bud was whining something fierce at this point. He's sort of like a personal trainer, you know? He lets me know when it is time to take a break from the grind and get some fresh air. It can be a struggle to get me out of my chair, and even more so if I have to get dressed. Today I was in my workout clothes. An oversized wife beater I stole, er, borrowed from Roy, and my work boots. Eh, sometimes the old twig and berries go on display if I'm not careful, like uh, picking up a perfectly fine cigarette butt someone has tossed out. Bending to pick those up puts on a delightful show for anyone behind me, but it's a freebie. It's one of the perks of living in my neighborhood. The workout was grueling. It was all cardio today. We stepped out at, I'd say, 7.43 p.m. and did not get back until whew, near 7.48. I was wiped, and the wife beater was soaked through. I splashed down on my chair, wheezing and coughing like a dying yak. As soon as the coughs began to ebb, I sparked up a smoke and settled right down. I messaged Kayla again at 8 o'clock, 8.22. 8.35, 8.36, and that's when she replied. Now, she says it was her father that had prevented her from getting back to me after she had logged into MySpace. Note to self. Remember to take Dr. Kayla's dad aside and make him an offer he can't refuse. Specifically, ask him to borrow beer and cigs money. Now, that's my kind of father-in-law. Kayla still needed to explain where she was all day. I sat back and just smirked. I knew she was going to have to spend quite the yarn if I was going to buy her reason, whatever it was. Well, it turns out she was in school all day. Okay, she dodged a bullet that time. While mentioning our mutual disdain for her father, Kayla stated she had gotten a C on her math test. Boy, did that bring back memories. As an Armstrong, I was conspired against by school faculty from day one. My siblings hammered it into me. Nobody in the clan had ever received a mark higher than a D, as folks were afraid of our superior genes. Therefore, as they put it, it was our lot in life to underperform, and I would be wise to not buck the system. With that in mind, I came to see school as the place where I went on the reg to receive tater tots, Salisbury steak, and warm milk. Also, every day I came to expect titty twisters, Indian burns, noogies, wet willies, froggers, swirlies, and atomic wedgies. And the students were even more brutal. Just as my beloved siblings had foretold, I received D's straight through. It was just about the one constant thing in my youth. 
I was comforted by the knowledge that every year my relationship with my teachers would be the same as the one before it and the one that came after. They would deem me a failing student in all areas, but give me all D's to ensure I would be someone else's problem the next year. Learning that Kayla had gotten a C on her math tests stirred something in me. Even while seeing Mr. Kayla's dad as my nemesis, I have to admit, I could see the draw with using her grades as an excuse to berate her. I went ahead and told her I still loved her despite the C. Internally, I knew I could explore grade shaming at a later date. Mr. Penis was the real star of the night. Kayla was typically aloof and feigned ignorance when we touched on the topics of length and girth. A penis pump was brought up, which is laughable. I actually tried one once, but because of the pronounced bend in the middle, I had to stuff it in double and instead of coming, I went. It wasn't pleasant. To change the focus of the conversation to something, anything else, I decided to test my precious princess's compliance. I ordered her to put her legs up on her chair and, well, do her experimenting. This went along for a few minutes, then it dawned on me. She wasn't experimenting at all. This was all a ruse. Nip it! Listen, you have to get up pretty damn early in the evening if you're going to try and get one past Flash Armstrong here. The dead giveaway that she was trying to pull a fast one? Before she, let's say, crossed the threshold in her experimenting? Nary a flap was mentioned. Now from personal experience, listening to vague descriptions of a woman's physiology, coupled with the occasional glimpse at an adult film or magazine, along with my own confused groping in the dark, I am well aware of the complex network of folds and flaps which must be traversed if one is to access any one of the female pleasure bumps. Well, by my calculations, such a journey would take even the most skilled lovers, say Roy for example, in the area of 30 to 35 minutes, just to breach the hole. Kayla's big screw up was the speed in which she was claiming to have done so. She thinks I'm a big pushover. Am I mad? Nah, she's young. I can allow her some feisty behavior. She may as well get it out of her system now because things are going to be a lot different when we are secure within Le Chateau de Lorne. They don't call me the hammer for nothing. After her little charade, our conversation turned to more mundane things. While discussing what we will eat when she is here, pizza was mentioned. Damn, bitch, I'm not made of money. Well, I suppose I'll have to start gathering what I need for my traditional Sazatura pizza. It's a secret recipe that involves finding a pizza box in good condition, then spending a few days searching restaurant dumpsters for uneaten slices. I simply assemble the various slices into a whole pizza. The randomness of the toppings tends to make it look more dynamic. It's like a, uh, what you call it, uh, fusion pizza. Damn, now I'm getting hungry. You know what, I should call it a night diary. I'm gonna head down to La Crapazio on the corner and panhandle for pizza. Then I'll come home and knead my own dough, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow, diary. Good night. As always, let me thank my very special patrons. Dummy Dan, Kelp Hill, Tech Rex 71, Cat G. West Most, Michael's, Michael's Tea Cap Channel, channel. M1A, M1A. Ramiro Sam, Tea Cap Recipes, Graham Graham, Arrow Doe, Dr. Dr. K, Dr. K. Dr. Tiffany Lockhart, Dr. Joey's Tea Cap channel. channel, Michelle Simpson, Uriel Gray, Gray. Moody Moody, Nathan Ramon, The Lorne Identity. Identity. Rhoda's Chew Tootsie. I'm just being honest. Amanda James. Saul. Claudette. Many syllables. Patrick Tcap Ireland. Twink Toilet's Friends Mom's Cancer. Julie. C and J Dev. After Supper Biscuit. And the universal truth that is gooey hooey.
Thank you to everyone who has joined the party here on the Baked Salmon channel. We are about 150 subs away from 3,000. Stay tuned for whatever epicness I can throw together for that celebration. And check out Baked Salmon's Closet for some official merch. I just made one for everyone's favorite monkey puppet, so we got that going for us. If you want to get in on the favorite predator video, you can call the salmon line or send an audio file to bakeline2020 at gmail. That's it for now. See you next time. Bye.